Alyssa, I am a little bit discombobulated here because all of our uh-huh. recording times have changed around for this show, for yeah. crossplay, all that stuff. They're they're kind of all up in the air. Did I tell you much about the Bob's Burgers weekend that I have that I had? You you said that you and your girlfriend made uh, 50 ways to leave your guava burgers. Yes. And you went to the movies and you really enjoyed the movie. OK, so I, I did m- mention it, but that was on the captain's log last time we recorded it. Or was that like on, on a review show might, like how was your weekend it might, it was, it was yeah i think it was the how was your weekend beginning of the review show okay okay uh so i'll 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 go into a little bit more detail uh this this time since we're on the captain's log here so i had a bob's burgers weekend uh-huh. like two weekends ago by now um and it was really fun i i uh, like the show. My girlfriend likes the show. She's the one that got me into watching it. Uh, and over the past, I don't know, like two years now, we've been just slowly watching the 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 the, the show. And we caught up like the weekend that the Bob's Burgers movie came out. We have now that we're all caught up on the show. Season 12 is the most recent one. Wow. And they had their finale the same weekend that the movie came out. Um, Whoa. Yeah. So we went to go see the movie. We got caught up with the show. Uh, and then I bought my girlfriend the official like Bob's Burgers cookbook. Um, <laughs> I like that you're holding up your hands to frame where it would be and isn't, even though I'm sure you could like go to your kitchen and actually get there. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I bought that for her and it has a bunch of the like joke burgers uh, that mm-hmm. are in the show up on his like burger of the day. Um and I, we, we tried one of them that weekend, like you said at the start here, it was the 50 ways to leave your guava burger. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm to be honest, I'm kind of a picky eater. So I was like, this is the one I think I am mm-hmm. most OK with eating. <laughs> um, but man, it was so good. It, we, it was basically a Hawaiian barbecue burger is what it was it, it, you know we we made the patties ourselves we seasoned them uh it was a homemade barbecue sauce that the recipe ha- had us make with guava jelly uh it, it was like guava jelly and ginger and uh mm. like worcestershire sauce and soy sauce and you make that mix the barbecue sauce and then you put like a pineapple slice on there and some bacon and it's just oh, the thing was so good um and we've now used that barbecue sauce that same recipe on like we made ribs since Ooh. then and stuff and we're just like i think we found like our our homemade barbecue sauce that we can put nice. on stuff it's so good <laughs> as um, every couple every couple who's just moved in together you want to find your barbecue sauce. <laughs> you really do. I'm not even kidding. Like, <laughs> I, I, I mean, like if, if you have like a, a, a partner and you like a fun thing to do is like find recipes that you guys enjoy mm-hmm. making together and stuff like that. And that's been one of the goals of my girlfriend and I is to like step up our cooking game and like have some just really really good re- recipes that we can make our own uh and make on our our own um that we can just have and just have some really good food um and so yeah we now like have these burgers but we also have just like well we can use that barbecue sauce for other things like we can do this and we can do that and we're just like yeah now we're starting to think um, mm-hmm. but that was good the bob's burgers movie itself uh was fantastic i really nice. enjoyed it um if you're a longtime fan of the show uh i think there's there's a couple real emotional m- moments in oh. there that might make you tear up um, I, wow. uh, t- t- to be honest, I almost 
teared up at one of the the the, the bits there. I was just like, oh, this is so good. Yes. I like it. Um, I'm happy fun. that that's following in the footsteps of the Simpsons movie, which also has a part in it that makes me cry. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, it I I liked it a lot. The animation is slightly different, same character mm. design, same all all that, but they use some CGI to build out some of the sets mm. to do like you've seen on movies and shows where the, like they they do the like 3D camera of the yeah. set and all that. So yeah, things look slightly d- d- different in there, which was a bit jarring at first but by the end of it i didn't mind at all um it's actually almost a musical like there's a couple wow, like musical nice. numbers in there um which i if you if you know the show they usually have some song that they sing at the end credits that they made up for each uh <laughs> thing there and it's it's fantastic i had a blast uh, if you get the chance to go say, hey, 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 go check it out. Um, I highly recommend it. Nice. That, that was my Bob's Burgers weekend. From Thank you for sharing <laughs> this fully detailed experience. Yeah. Last weekend, I went to one of my local IMAX theaters to see Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. And it was it was a transcendent experience. Oh, man. I, I still haven't gone to go see it yet. My parents have said the same thing of like, hey, go check it out. It was really good. Um, you, I say go for the IMAX. Now, St. Louis in our science museum, we have an Omnimax, which is an IMAX theater that is a five that story dome. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's. You're in a dome. It's like going to a planetarium, which we also have. But the planetarium is a movie theater. It's huge. I I saw Rogue One there oh, okay. five or six years ago when Rogue One was happening. I wanted to see it there, but uh, like I would also have to pay for parking uh, at the science museum. And I'm like, I'm I'm not paying for the expensive movie ticket and for parking. So I just went to a conventional IMAX screen in a local standard movie theater. The packed crowd, so lively, so vibrant. That's awesome. The second you see the when you see the plane take off and they play Danger Zone, I understood why humans seek thrills. I yep. know why people skydive. I know why my dad owns a motorcycle now. I understand <laughs> thrill. And I think this is mine. This felt like being on a roller coaster. Like it, it felt like a ride. I don't remember the last time I got to be on a ride, but this felt like it. I think this is the type of thrill seeker I am. I'm not going to be on a motorcycle. I'm not going to uh, go skydiving or white water raft or anything, but I will go see go very the intense, IMAX. intense, immersive IMAX experiences. I had to get myself to a 4DX. We don't have any here. I got to find whatever the closest 4DX theater is here in the Midwest. I've, I've heard the 4DX experience for this one is pretty good. Actually, oh. so uh, I've never been to a 4DX theater. I always I I don't like them. I don't like the experience of those sensations and things that they do to try and make you feel like you're in the action. I want to try it. I, I, Ooh, okay. I feel like I have to try it eventually on something. Okay, we can go to Wichita. There's Wichita. a 40X there. Interesting. Okay. Okay. There you go. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome <laughs> to the palindromatic 191 of Ooh. the Whatnots Captain's Log. My name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined by Melissa Wilkinson. You are. Hello. I am. Hello. Hello. Indeed. Melissa, this is our second podcast of the day. Yeah, we did. uh, We we typically record the Whatnots review show on Sunday mornings. We don't typically record uh, the Captain's Log on Sunday afternoons. But yet here we are. Uh, Sam is joining us in the chat. Sam. This is early Sunday. Yes, uh, our, our schedules have, have gotten all discombobulated uh, and stuff like that. So here we are doing our thing. 
all of that good stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm still still hoping to make it out to Top Gun. I feel like it, that's one that will be in theaters for a while, considering mm. how much money it's been making. Um, apparently, it's like Tom Cruise's like best opening weekend of any of his movies of all Surprising. time. Surprising. <laughs> I mean, people really like that first one. Mm. Like it, it is a classic. I know uh, maybe for more modern audiences, younger audiences, they're just like, eh, it's a movie. They might uh, like the vibes of it. Top Gun is great at vibes, just like the California beaches, sunsets <laughs> over the water. The vistas of the original yeah. Top Gun are fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then people have been saying that this is a great sequel. Mm-hmm. So it just, yeah, it seems like it has everything going for for it so there you go hope hopefully i can get my my butt into one of those seats mm-hmm. there. i recommend yeah indeed uh but melissa speaking of vibes yeah. uh, ah! i got some uh hard mountain dew wow right here this is uh hard mountain <coughs> dew watermelon that's it the uh, wildest that's, of that's the flavors the name yeah no like black cherry it's just watermelon it's the most summery, so I'm happy you saved it for last as we get deeper here into summer. This is a flavor to be enjoyed after Memorial Day. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a good summery uh, flavor. So all of these cans have the like biker logo symbol. It's hard for you guys to see this on camera here on the podcast. But uh, yeah, this one has a snake. Uh, which you would think they would maybe pair with like an apple flavor but uh, oh hey, yeah a, 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 su- a summary snake and watermelon here maybe they're trying to say that this one has a sting Ooh. to it or something <laughs> a venom sting. venom thing you you open up the watermelon there's a snake inside right yeah a um, snake could, many snakes i bet could fit in many watermelons you could probably have a couple yeah don't don't put them in i don't know if a snake wants to be in a watermelon but i'm saying they would fit this one smells the worst oh i will say that i got a whiff just as it was like sitting out here like a foot away from my face um fermented watermelon smells Mm. weird Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I don't think I, well, I guess I, I don't know if this is made with actual watermelon. I would assume not. And it's just like the flavoring. But I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what it tastes like. Interesting. Huh? Um, weird. So I've been bringing these hard Mountain Dew flavors on the Captain's Zog for the past month now. This is the final yeah. one here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to rank the flavors. Uh-huh. There's two of them that taste more like medicine to me. Yep. And Inevitable. It's not, it, well, th- so one of the flavors is black cherry, but that's not one of the ones that tastes like medicine to me, which is interesting mm-hmm. because cherry is usually the one that everyone's like Mm. it tastes like medicine gross um Mm -hmm. this one kind of tastes like medicine to me Uh, i don't know it's it's this one and then like the original mountain dew flavor are the ones that taste like medicine to me i i (laughs) guess the original mountain dew one less so because it just tastes like mountain dew but it's the one that had the most like Oh, this has like that weird alcohol aftertaste yeah. stuff. Yeah. So this one definitely tastes like watermelon. Like it's a good crisp, summery watermelon. I think it has more flavor than like a white claw. If you if you want like a hard yeah. seltzer with with that, this has like more of a punch to it. Uh, not like a fruit punch <laughs> flavor, but like an actual. It, it, ha- yeah. it has a sting, right? <laughs> <laughs> a sting like a snake has <laughs> mm. a snake you know, has a bite it doesn't have a sting well, it's, right? it's, it's two morbid. stingers <laughs> it's stingers <laughs> in its mouth teeth, teeth you know. are mouth stingers you're right <laughs> um it's not bad like i i don't dislike it but i can see mm. 
have like, okay, this is maybe a little more medicine-y than I would hope for. But it's, it, it's still good. I enjoy it. Now, Please how does drinking down. this at 2 p.m. on a Sunday afternoon feel as opposed to the usual, like, 8 p.m. when you normally drink these? And I'm proud to be an American. <laughs> or at least I know I'm free. <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's Sunday afternoon. That's a good time mm. for b- 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 beer, especially in the middle of the summer, like that, mm-hmm. that after church lunch. Beer, right? Sure. That's what I thought about pouring myself. I think (laughs) I I buy it. Sure. I thought about pouring myself a drink to join you, but I only have red wine open right now, (laughs) and I feel like you have to drink red wine after the sundown. I don't know if you can drink red wine during the day. There's probably not like a law about it. If I had white wine, I would have brought that. But like you, you, you'd have to be at like a wine tasting or some kind of fancy wine and cheese party. Uh, thing there where they are decanting the alcohol and sifting it through the big sift grifter <laughs> thing. I don't you know pan what it is. for it like you're panning for gold. <laughs> panning for wine. <laughs> um, so, all right, here is my ranking yes. of the hard Mountain Dew. Um, my least favorite has to be the original Mm. i I just it's not a distinct enough flavor that i i mean i i recognize it as mountain dew but it's not like a singular watermelon or black cherry right like it's not like that so it does end up like i said having that just that weird alcohol aftertaste um a little bit menace medicine-y, but not much. It's just like, mm. oh, yeah, this is Mountain Dew, and it has an alcohol aftertaste. So it was just like, all right. Yep. What I expected. Um, after that, I would have to say is this watermelon flavor, uh, which is supposed to be their, like, major melon flavor. If oh, you yeah. The actual soda. Um, but uh, that would be my third uh, I, I guess in the r- ranking there, uh, my next one after that uh, would be the um, the Baja Blast. Ah, one. that one was really g- good. I liked that one. That is also one that doesn't really have like a specific mm. flavor as it's more like multiple <laughs> fruits. But that one was very su- subtle and I liked it mm. a lot. Um, I, I, I think that one had a great taste. But then surprisingly, the cherry one was my yeah. favorite. I, I liked that one a lot. Um, that one, I think, is helped out because it has that singular flavor. And while I was expecting it to mm. be medicine-y, it wasn't really, at least to me. Um, mm-hmm. And so that was, I think, a big surprise. I was like, oh, this actually just tastes like a cherry soda. Like this, Ooh. like this, this t- tastes good so the um, hard mountain dew black cherry is my favorite of of the four flavors that they got there so congratulations well thank you i i worked hard to get here (laughs) (laughs) congratulations to you to black cherry to the mountain dew uh as a whole as a whole concept Uh, here's here's to here's to hard mountain dew cheers (laughs) Good stuff. Good stuff. Mr. Yazman is in the chat. What's up, Yaz? Hello. 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 Hi, hi. All that stuff. Um, movie talk. So we 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 kind Movies. of interrupted our movie talk to do the the Hard Mountain Dew segment. Um, got to have and, a beverage with a movie. Oh, sure. Yeah, but we have we have some interesting news here that I don't think I was aware of until it happened, and this uh-huh. news came out. Um, let's see, I, uh, first, Yasmin in the chat says, are you guys t- talking about Pepsi that tastes like maple syrup and the Mountain Dew with the flaming hot Whoa! taste? I haven't heard about the maple si- syrup Pepsi. Is, is this the like nitro one? Yasmin, is, is that the Pepsi. one you're talking about? I, I would like to try like a, a, an actual like maple Pepsi if, if that is an actual uh, thing. 
I hop and Pepsi made a maple syrup cola. Oh. Oh, this is an article about the limited edition flavor uh, from March. So we may have missed the yeah. window for maple Pepsi. Damn. Pepsi, very popular in Canada. So this seems like a good match. Okay. okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, the Flame and Hot Mountain Dew. Oh. We actually did a taste test of that a long time ago when it first was still limited edition. I think I, yeah, I still have the. You can't really see it, but that's <laughs> that's the can of the 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 Flame and Hot Mountain Dew back there. <laughs> that was good. We did that a while ago. Um, but movie no is here so i have yet to see morbius i Uh I didn't go check it out when it was in theaters i knew it was gonna kind of be bad i was just like well i'll get to it one day uh well it did very bad uh it flopped uh and then it became a meme right Uh people are getting morbed left and right there's this <laughs> meme about uh, like Morbius 2, it's Morbin time. Um, <laughs> and there's that now a video of Jared Leto looking at a fake script that has that title on it. Um, uh, like all that, all that stuff. It's, it's been memes to hell. Uh, apparently, because it became such a successful meme, they put it back in theaters hoping to capitalize. Mm-hmm. On, on right. the success <laughs> of the meme, right? Yeah. Uh, apparently, in its opening weekend, it made eighty five thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> its second opening weekend, it made eighty five thousand dollars. It just well, it how did, many movies no, get to have a <laughs> second opening weekend at all? I mean, sure, sure, not many, which, which is a, a big feat. But they put this back out in like a thousand theaters across the country uh and yeah, still just no one went to go see it <laughs> um I, I i thought that ha- was hilarious <laughs> have you been watching the new break room show this live stream they're doing on the new rock stars channel every weekday I afternoon I, I they're I very fun it, but I, I i haven't checked it out yet check it out uh, they've got a um, you can you know, you pay for a super chat to show up on a YouTube live stream. Sure. Yep. And you, they guess you can pay however much you want. And they were running uh, this this game, this challenge on Friday where Zach producer Zach Huddleston was like, if you guys donate, if you pay like three hundred dollars cumulatively in super chats today, I'll go see Morbius. <laughs> and he's like, I will be Stretch at this goal. theater in Burbank. I'll be at the 10 p.m. showing tomorrow. Like, you could go see Morbius with me. So I'm wondering, I look forward to tomorrow's episode to hear about that Morbius adventure. (laughs) Maybe all $85,000 are from this one new rock stars theater. That's funny. Yeah, if if I had known that it was back out in theaters and had I known if there was one near me, I Mm -hmm. might have tried to go see it. Right. Um, That sounds just wild. Yeah, just because I, I I haven't seen it yet, and I I have a, a no pun intended morbid c- c- curiosity yeah. about the film too. J- just like v- v- Venom and Venom Two, I've now seen the first Venom, but I haven't yet seen Venom Two, and I know it's I think it's streaming on Stars. Uh, hey, which I think we I I have access to. I think uh, so. I, I I think I'm able to watch Venom Two if I really want to. Um, Have fun. And then Morbius, I think, also just hit streaming services as well recently. Uh, I I don't know what, though, but uh, it's out there apparently. So maybe one day I'll find him. Come back here on the captain's log and just be like, I've seen it. I have seen I've been morbed. (laughs) Please report back to me on the morbening because I've I do not know a single person who's actually seen it. I I know that it's bad, but I don't know, like. (laughs) What it actually contains. Bad how? Are there parts that are good? How is Jared Harris in it? How bad can Jared Harris be? Tell me about him. From what I understand, from what I've been hearing, it's a very early 2000s superhero movie. Wow. Back when they were making like Blade and like the (laughs) the original X-Men or like that. Daredevil. Catwoman. This is what uh, I'm picturing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh what's the, i i don't uh what, matt smith is that the guy's name is that the actor's name no who am i the, oh, the doctor who yeah the the guy that's also in this one uh, apparently he's just in like a different movie uh wow. it, it, it com- compared to everyone else in this like the direction that he took the character in or was told to take the character in is just apparently just you're 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 somewhere else dude um and then plot holes galore i feel Mm. like so who knows and then some like weird end credit scene that's just like why 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 is this i don't know but i have yet to see it so someday we will learn yeah uh yasmin says i'm doing something similar i told kfbf on uh mark freeman zoom call and on twitter that if my youtube channel reaches a million subscribers subscribers i will review the adventures of acela or akala i'm not familiar with that one Ah. google it and you'll understand why i said one million sub goal (laughs) it's probably a real bad um man Morbius, Morbius, Morbius. Oh, well. Um, oh, yeah, oh, wow. Again. Oh, again. oh, yes. Is this this is looks this like it is. Yeah, please Google this. Uh, it reminds me of the Rap City Street Kids, but I imagine you don't know what that is. So that comparison isn't helpful. I don't, I don't think wow, so. Wow, yeah. these eyes, these yes. eyes, they are truly unnatural, and they're all the exact same sort of unnatural. They look like they are truly just copy pasted onto the face. They don't organically belong there. They're staring into my soul. They're yeah. bright cyan the way no eyes are. <laughs> yeah, it looks like an animated. I don't know if that's the right one. Uh, I guess it's the same, the same, this same is, style and all that stuff. But yeah, it's just like this, re- this CGI is, characters. They right. look like dolls. Almost. This looks like food fight. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't look well. Uh, and like it is from the year 2020. Mustache, yeah, mustache cool. <laughs> and we've got like a little girl wearing a weird dress. We've got two other kids. We have an old um, safari man. We have some sort of like an ogre, a, yeah. a green guy, like a frog man. Like a little and then just a man. Yeah. Right. And then just a completely normal looking eagle, tiger, and beagle. There's just a normal <laughs> beagle who's part of the cast. Yeah. I'm, I'm wow. pulling up the, the trailer on, on screen here. Are you ready for a fantastic adventure? <laughs> I am. Oh elsewhere. Thank you. A mysterious forest. There's sheep and goats. God, this looks like a bad PlayStation 2 mm-hmm. game. Curious kids. that sounds very sinister in a world with curious kids (laughs) there's a tiger there's an eagle in here what the hell is going is this like fake me out narnia right right weird i don't know yeah this (laughs) animation looks awful (laughs) good luck to you good luck to you and your million subscribers Yes, yeah, says it's a Turkish film where all the voice actors were hired through Fiverr. <laughs> oh my god! That's funny. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. The things people come up with these days, you know? I, well, I didn't think, have, have you seen these, this like a genre of YouTube videos where it's like, I paid five designers to redesign my logo or. Like I, I, I paid five yeah. musicians to do my intro. Yeah, me, 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 I've se- I, I've seen ones that are cakes. Like I paid three bakeries to sure, make yeah. this sort of cake. How'd yeah. they do it? I I kind of like those videos, and this kind of reminds me of that. Of like I I hired twenty different voice actors on Fiverr to make my movie. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so other d- kind of pop culture news here that we got that we want to Let's talk go about. Let's through it. Uh, so uh, apparently today, just before we started recording, 
uh, Marvel released a poster for I Am Groot, uh, which is going to be a a show on Disney Plus of uh, like shorts of animated shorts. Um, of course, starring baby Groot. Uh, let me see. I'm pulling up the tweet here with the poster so you all can see it. There it is. I am Groot from Marvel Studios. Looks like there's some little alien creatures in there yeah, as well. He's new. got himself uh, an alcoholic drink. Baby Groot, should you be drinking that? He's, Maybe it's he's a very old. Daiquiri. It's yeah, this is the Groot. explanation we had to give to our mom who right. saw Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and did like, not like that, did, did not like that those men were mean to the baby. And we had to explain to her that he's like a, a, an, oh a centuries God. old soul. He's just in a very small body. Like his body has just regenerated. Like he's not like literally a baby. <laughs> and she's like, I still don't like it. Right. That reminds me. So remember, this was what, back in like middle school for, for us or like early high school when Napoleon uh-huh. Dynamite was like yeah. the, the, the big the big thing. Apparently, my friend's mom went to go see the movie because, you know, it was it was the talk of the town. What, what is this Napoleon Dynamite that the kids are talking about all the t- time? And apparently she walked out of the movie crying because oh. everyone was so mean to napoleon and, and all that he's just either bullying him and we just we just thought that was the funniest thing that the mom like <laughs> left like so upset that like <laughs> he was being he's, bullied it was great he has allies <laughs> he's got pedro he's got deb <laughs> yeah <laughs> it ends on a positive note for napoleon he shows everybody he, he sure does, but uh, she sure doesn't know that. <laughs> we just thought that was really uh, honey. Uh, but yeah, I am Groot coming out August 10th. Uh, when nice. when was She-Hulk coming out? It, wasn't oh. this around the same time? Yeah. It was like August 8th or like August t- 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 10th. Let me see here. Uh, she. Yeah, maybe Hulk. the 10th is a Wednesday. Release date. What does it say here? August 17th. So it's the week after. All right. There you go. Good stuff. Nice little, it's like watching a little cartoon before the movie starts. Like watching (laughs) a Pixar short. (laughs) That would be awesome. That's brilliant. I would love that. I would love if they brought this back. If they had like a mini what if cartoon before we go see the Marvels or something. Oh my God. Yes. That would be, I, oh. I'd, I'd, I would pay extra to go see that. That'd be mm. incredible. Um, yeah, good stuff. I, I don't really know what to expect with that, but it's just little shorts on yeah. that. So uh, we shall see. Nice, we shall see. nice way to introduce Groot to a small child. <laughs> Important sure, yeah. to know. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, and then, Melissa, a long time ago on the review show, uh, we read a long comic time book ago. long to curious kids um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, on our podcast, The Review Show, which is our weekly book club style podcast. Uh, we covered a comic book by Jeff Lemire uh, entitled uh, called Essex County. Um, and it's it's kind of an anthology series set in a small town in Canada. Um mm. And it's just it's it's these like slices of life that are out there. And it's a really, really good comic. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know Melissa, it's one that's kind of stuck with you as a favorite of some of the stuff that we've read. It's it it was a very impressive piece of work, especially for being such a simple, straightforward slice of life story. But there's. Oh, there, there's imagery in it that's very haunting. It's a, it's a very sort of uh, wistful story. Uh, it's it's not fun. I, I don't know if I'd say it's fun, but it's a it's really not solid piece of work. Uplifting, right? Yeah, it's, no, it's just, it sticks with you. But it's it's, mm-hmm. it's also not necessarily like so sad that you're like yeah. you're gonna walk away from this being depressed for the rest of your life it, mm. it, it, it it does have some melancholy to it but it it is this like yeah this this charming 
slice of life story. Um, just you, you get these little pieces for around the town. Um, well, apparently Jeff Lemire announced uh, that CBC has officially announced yeah. that uh, they are adapting it as a five part live action TV miniseries coming mini March 2023. Uh, and Jeff Lemire himself is show running and co-writing the se- series. And he says Good to for stay him. tuned for more details soon. Um, yeah, hi- highly recommend that comic. Go check it out. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it's still on Comixology Unlimited. If you have mm-hmm. a subscription to that, you guys can go read it there. I think we talked about um, it on episode 40 of the review show. Oh, <laughs> this man. is years ago. We we do. We- today we recorded episode 208 of the review show yeah, so this yeah. was a long time ago yeah um but yeah i'm i'm excited excited for that i like that uh a bunch of jeff lemire's stories are finally being adapted uh, on screen he's also the creator mm-hmm. of sweet tooth uh if yeah. you guys have seen that netflix show about the young kid with the deer antlers the series was okay i liked it uh, I, I think season two is on its way. It should be oh. here either this year or next year. I don't know if That's it's nice. going to really continue much after that. Um, but that that was nice. But yeah, J- J- Jeff Lemire is a fantastic comic cr- creator. Mm-hmm. He's been uh, inducted into the review show Hall of Fame. Yes. We've read a number of his his <laughs> stuff there. And it, he's he's a favorite. We'll have to do a formal review show uh, Hall of Fame special what's, one day. Once, once we actually have more people in there than just Jeff Lemire, because we haven't, we haven't <laughs> like, really actually it? inducted anyone else besides <laughs> Jeff Lemire. <laughs> I feel like in my heart, Bruce Willis is in there because we've accidentally watched six Bruce yes. Willis movies, yeah, which might be the default. most. <laughs> he's in like we talked about three separate movies and then the whole unbreakable trilogy so we've talked about yeah. him on four different episodes and i don't know if that's happened to another actor i'd have to i'd have to check winning by technicality is bruce <laughs> <Smith>. <laughs> good stuff mm-hmm. good stuff so yeah congratulations to jeff lemire uh that is a great comic i'm excited to see that I, I hope it's it's just like a straight ad- yeah. d- 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 adaption where each one is like its own little slice of life story there in Essex County. Mm-hmm. Could be fun. Could be fun. Uh, last but not least, before we do our break and then get into the second half of the show, uh, our flag means death. Officially got a second season. Good. Uh, good uh, happy pride month to everybody yeah i i feel like they waited for per pride <laughs> month to start to specifically be like hey that gay pirate sh- show you all like second season you're getting more they of announced it, it with a banner in a parade yeah yeah indeed indeed um that that is a phenomenal phenomenal show uh we also so, covered that so more sweet. recently. Uh, yeah, on the review show. Lots of shout shout outs to our other podcast, the review right. show. Um, but uh, yeah, we are happy that that one got a season two. Hmm. Well, there you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, well, I think this is a good spot for a break for housekeeping and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And then when we get back, uh, we got some uh, some interesting uh, things to talk about here with movie titles and yes. names and yes. protagonists and stuff yes. like that. So stay <laughs> tuned. We'll be right back. We put a lot of hard work into the shows that we make. And yes, we make multiple different shows here at The Whatnots. And we'd love it if you check them all out. You can find out more information on our website at thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in the whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. If you want to support what we do here at the whatnots, patreon.com slash the whatnots is the best place to do that. 
You can support us for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all kinds of exclusive content at the $3 tier. You can also get a shout out and a thank you on all of our shows at the $5 tier. You can support us on Twitch by subscribing to our channel at twitch.tv slash the whatnots. And we would love to have you all join us for our live streams and talk with us in the chat. And lastly, we have merch. If you'd like to grab yourself a shirt or a sweatshirt or a mug or something else, go to the whatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. <laughs> and we are back. A big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Opening up your wallets and supporting us. It means a lot. Uh, we appreciate it tons. Cool things that we've been up to here on the review show. Of course, in the show, we've mentioned a b bunch of stuff that we've done on the review show. Uh, but this morning, we recorded uh, the review show on a manga called yeah. That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime. Uh, you know, to, it's a ridiculous name. And it's been one that's been on my radar because of how ridiculous that name is. Um, if you like JRPGs, if you like fantasy uh, stories, if, 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 if you like that kind of stuff, this might be up, up your alley. If you're mm -hmm. interested in getting into manga and don't really know where to start, I feel like this is a good one to check out and, and start with. Um, you don't really need to know anything else. Like there's a few references to other things out there, but not stuff that is a hindrance to checking out. Um, so yeah, that, that was a good one. Good surprise. I had a lot mm -hmm. of fun with that. Uh, on Crossplay, our video game podcast, we are gearing up for Summer Game Fest. E3 is not happening this year, but Summer Game Fest is happening in its stead. There's going to be all kinds of uh, new game announcements and trailers and all that stuff. And uh, Sony kicked it off this past week with a brand new state of play. That's their showcase. Um, and we, we got to see the new F Final Fantasy 16. Mm. We got to see the new Street Fighter. Uh, so we've been talking about all of that stuff. We've also been d diving into our backlog of video games and playing things like Sekiro and Cyberpunk and all of that stuff. Uh, so go check out Crossplay. Um, there's some cool things coming down the road with that. Uh, and then on the... On the Reactor Core, uh, both myself and Ignacio Rojas, who is one of the hosts of Crossplay, we did our reactions to Obi-Wan Kenobi Part 1. We, we did uh, it on like the first half, the first <laughs> three of that show. Uh, so be on the lookout down the road when we do our reactions to the finale of that. Uh, and Miss Marvel also starts this week. So be on yeah. the lookout for our reactions uh, to that coming up real soon here. That's about it for housekeeping. Um, let's get into the second half of the show here. Yes. Melissa, I had. You, you made an observation. Okay. I did. We are living in a period where there are a lot of sequels and spinoffs that are simply named after the protagonist. We talked about, we watched Obi-Wan. I mm -hmm. watched Top Gun Maverick. You Ahsoka look at the upcoming- is coming. Right, right, exactly. This is, it was the Star Wars celebration that made me think about this. Like, I Andor. understand. <laughs> exactly. Cassie and Andor. Is, is the most interesting title for the Cassie and Andor show really just Andor? I understand, like, the name recognition, the brand identity. There's nothing wrong with this as an individual strategy. Shows just named shows movies just named after the person or not new. <laughs> but I feel like we're getting too many of them. And somebody has to somebody has to do what the acolyte did and call themselves something right? something more abstract than that. Even the acolyte, though, is not too far off from that naming convention, right? Where it's like Mm. job title the right? mandalorian we have had him sure yeah i mean that is a, that one's that one's not a job title per se though that's yeah race yeah you can't <laughs> apply to the, be a mandalorian. mandalorian 
right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, th- there's a lot. I mean, the, there's there's history of j- just a thing being named after like the protagonist. Yeah. Yeah. It's but yeah, not it new. It seems like recently there's been an influx of that, which. On one hand, I don't actually mind. Mm -hmm. I don't mind it when it is these mini series, right? When it is these like limited series, six episodes that Cassian and or here's the show that focuses on him. And it's a character study on that, right? But yeah, if if it's a bigger movie, I don't. It's like, what? Really? Like, you're just like if if the Harry Potter movies were only named Harry Potter and didn't yeah. have that subtitle. It's, it's Harry it's Potter strange. 2. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. It. it just has the number two, the number th- three at the end. Um, yeah. It, like I, Rocky. It just, it sometimes that doesn't, it, yeah. Rocky is maybe more iconic. Yeah. I, I, Rocky I is also like, like an adjective. Ones. Rocky is literal and s- symbolic. His journey go. is rock. James Bond. You bond is, with him. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if he bonds to other now. people, but you bond with him. Yeah. Yeah. But the, yeah, there, there absolutely is like an influx of mm-hmm. just the, the protagonist is the yeah. title. And I do admire that the James Bond movies, like his name is not in the title of any of them. His name's like on the poster. It's part of the branding of the thing, but like it was not James Bond has no time to die. James Bond in Skyfall. Like there is a lot of creativity to those titles, and I admire that. The Mission mm-hmm. Impossible movies have got pretty creative titles. Yeah. And I like I said, there's nothing wrong individually with a show named after the person, but there's too many of them. Some of these w- let's go through a renaming exercise. Mm-hmm. I I I would like if Obi Wan was just called Old Ben. <laughs> yeah, it um, uh, you would you would have like I because the series itself is very much about yeah this guy who's kind of closed himself off from the force and hasn't realized things that are kind of happening out there in the world mm. and that certain people are still alive and all of that stuff. <laughs> So it it like the word revelation comes to mind ah. with that. Um, so I don't I, like I don't know, like I don't want that to be the title, but it needs some other kind of thing with mm-hmm. the word revelation. I like, like that. Yeah. Right. Like, revelation in the sand. Sure. Or Jedi <laughs> revelations. Or, right. or I'm OK something. with this. I'm okay with this being punctuation name, soup still. where it's like name colon phrase. I'll take the punctuation oh soup to get more words than just the name. Speaking of punctuation soup and Star Wars, one of the worst offenders of this is Who? a video game series called Star Wars Jedi. And so it is Star Wars semicolon Jedi. But then they also have a subtitle after that. So there's another semicolon and a, a, a thing there. So it's Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order or Star mm-hmm. Wars Jedi Survivor. Like the You don't have to tell us that. Jedi. You can tell well, us when there's not a Jedi. That's well, more specific. That's the thing. I think they didn't want to include the Star Wars name per, per se or, or, or j- 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 just like Star Wars Fallen Order might not have the SEO that mm-hmm. they really want. So I think by them putting Jedi in there, they really brand it as its own separate thing. Star Wars Jedi. And then it's yeah. Fallen Order or Survivor. But it's just like name semicolon second name semicolon third name (laughs) (laughs) third name is where the excitement is let's make it just the excitement baby (laughs) it's it's, it's cut out all the other stuff it's like being called by your 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 full name like when someone's mad at you kyle bradley springer (laughs) star wars jedi (laughs) fallen order Right. If we're really upset
that in a movie. People should invent a middle name to accost it by. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> James Bond 007 Quantum of Solace. What are you doing? <laughs> no, it's like a he let's give it a human middle name. James Bond 007 Horace Quantum of Solace. We're disappointed in you. God, that's funny. Let's give, let's give movies middle names, not characters, but movies. <laughs> Fast Margaret Furious, you're in trouble. And where is your sister? Too fast. Te- <laughs> <I'm like> Terry <laughs> Too Furious. Terry. <laughs> if your middle name is Terry, please write in. <laughs> God, um, no. So, so, so to to get back what we were actually yeah. supposed to do here, uh, rethinking some of the n- names here for a show that is only named after the protagonist. What what else? What's another example of a of something that's named after a protagonist? I feel like you could come up with a better name for Top Gun Maverick than Top Gun Maverick. Like, there's so much okay, cool. Sure, yeah like pilot lingo you could have named it after something like that it's like it really doesn't tell you anything i know he'll be there i know he will continue to be a maverick you I mean, don't just spell that out top for gun. me yeah right, like they, they they have the, the, the name top gun they I, don't necessarily need that and subtitle there but i feel like for a was... legacy sequel a sequel that is happening so far after the initial one you should have a subtitle instead of just two, the Top Gun two, yeah. to to sort of give it that, I don't know the, the that air of respect. You could call it yeah. like Top Is Gun it, Hard Limit or, or something. That's not a bad name. Uh, I I think that's also that they they don't necessarily want to hinder people from mm. like oh this is the second one I haven't seen the first one so not gonna go watch this but mm-hmm. if it's something like top gun maverick it's like oh this is the first of that or if you know that it is technically a sequel you can go watch that first one or right you can get caught up it's not difficult to do that but because it doesn't have the two there it's not necessarily hindering uh mm-hmm. there um yeah I, See, I, 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 I even think about for our podcasts of like do Uh i really want to put so i when we publish the podcast i don't publish the number of the podcast in the title it's in the description but it's not the title so that way i I don't want someone to see like that time i got reincarnated as a slime episode 208 and they think wow they've done 208 episodes <laughs> on that time i got reincarnated right. as a slime Ext- and just not extremely granular we talk yeah. about every individual goblin right yeah <laughs> um episode 59 about mountain f32 <laughs> right <laughs> um you guys yeah, yeah, will know what that means if you've read the manga um mm. but yeah, like I that way, if if someone like has read that manga or has seen the movie that we're watching that week, they feel like they can jump in on that one, which they can. I just don't want that number to scare them off of like, man, too, I have to catch up on a hundred and something of right. these. Right. They do that so. anime thing where they put their arm behind their head. They're that nervous. <laughs> that or uh i always hit the, so yeah i i i do it as the like <laughs> big, 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 big bashful like oh god golly gee what do you know but in my mind i also think of uh shane from the walking dead who's just like you can't protect him rick you you can't yeah. protect him <laughs> so there you go um there is let me add, an, uh, oh. uh, no i just just another example is that there's an upcoming disney plus uh, animated series about princess tiana who i love just called tiana like sure. can we call it like tiana's place like the restaurant she's gonna open can it be tiana oh, yeah. and something tiana colon something tiana's possessive 
something. Can we get one more word, please? Right, exactly. So to kind of wrap things up then, Uh let me ask you this. Would you still watch movies if a movie that did not have a name that was just the protagonist name, if it was just named after the protagonist? Oh, like that's what you're asking. Okay, would would you go see Raleigh Beckett the movie, which is just (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if I would. When you wrote this down, I was thinking about what if movies were named after the civilian names, so it wasn't Top Gun Maverick, it was Top Gun Pete Mitchell. Yes, that or or just Pete (laughs) Mitchell the movie. (laughs) Pete Mitchell. I want a shirt that is the Top Gun font and it just, just says Pete Mitchell. Mitchell. <laughs> or or like instead of Mission Impossible, it's Ethan. Right, not even Ethan Hunt, <laughs> just Ethan. Just, just Ethan. <laughs> right, I would love if Captain Marvel was just called Carol and then the movie Carol with Kate Blanchett has to be called something else. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, like I, 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 th- I think that'd be really funny. Um, I would love it. Okay, give me a minute. Okay, okay. Bruce, Bruce returns. Bruce forever. Bruce and Dick. Uh, the Bruce begins. Dick. We've got Bruce versus Clark. We've got uh, Bruce, <laughs> Bruce and Clark and friend. Right. The Bruce. <laughs> Lego Bruce. Bruce versus Clark. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really funny. <laughs> I just it'd be it, it's it's a lot more nondescript to 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 do like just the first name that they run <laughs> out of names quickly. But <laughs> The first name thing, sometimes this does work, though. People love Barry. People love Dave. There's something like there's something when it's just like a plain, normal, given name that's so understated. It does become kind Mm -hmm. of funny and kind of intriguing. Like Barry is a better name for that show than the Hitman or something. What if uh, would you go see a movie called? Dominant Cobb. <laughs> I'd go to a restaurant named Dominic Cobbs. Well, you'd be missing out on a movie c- called Inception. So <laughs> <laughs> God. Uh, what's the name of the guy from Avatar? Does anyone know? <laughs> uh who's the protagonist in that? Jake Sully. <laughs> Oh, right, right. Jake. James Cameron's Jake Jake makes $2 billion. Amazing. Um, God, yeah, I I like some of these. I would only work in retrospect, like only knowing what they are actually. Right. Mm. But uh, I I think that's that's really funny. (laughs) I this is a challenge. I want to see famous movie logos uh, that are just the, the main character normal name. normal human names. <laughs> Let's see here in this movie. Um, where's the? Oh yeah, Ren McCormack. <laughs> it's Footloose. <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> Footloose is a great title. I love titles well, yeah, that are Footloose like is am- a concept. A I was looking, I was thinking back on review show topics. Welcome to the Captain's Log, the number one podcast where we talk about the review show. But like, <laughs> Halt and Catch Fire is a great title. Yes. And that concept, the like computer command code that is the phrase Halt and Catch Fire, never actually comes up, but just spiritually, it informs what that show is about. Yes, like the absolutely. leftovers is perfect. If you call the way I would also live if the leftovers was just called Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Right. If Hold and Catch Fire was called Joe and Company. 
<laughs> it's like, let's yeah. get back into That's a funny. land of like abstract titles. Avatar, one of the top abstract titles out there. God, yeah. Yeah, I guess. I, yeah, I guess. I, I still don't like I, the movie Avatar. I, but whatever. You don't have to like it. We're talking about title theory here. We can name other movies with great abstract titles like Uncut Gems. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's more coming down the line. Yes, we've got like straight by the book Elvis, but then we've also got Nope. We've got 3,000 Years of Longing, these very evocative titles that right. give you a mystery. And it's like, come to the theater, solve the mystery. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of stuff you could do, but some of these are just really funny to think about. I- <laughs> Joe and company. <laughs> God, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, well, I think that's a, a good place to wrap up the show for mm-hmm. this week. Uh, I did not get into my cinema corner uh, for mm-hmm. this week. But I can do that next week. Um, yes. So, yeah, we will wrap things up here. So, Melissa, where can the people find you on the Internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And listen to my other podcasts, Saturday Morning Obscurities, show where me and my brother Jams talk about weird old kids shows you feel like only you remember. And our latest episode is on the underrated and truly bizarre Disney animated film Meet the Robinsons. Good stuff. Good stuff. You guys can find me at Yo Kyle Springer on Twitter. And if you want to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do here at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots on Twitter. So please go like, share and subscribe. That would help us out a ton. Uh, Please spread the word. Uh, We would be super grateful for all of that. Uh, But yeah, this has been number 191 of the Captain's Log. We will see you all next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.